Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator, and very kindly, Jason Kingsley got on his horse Warlord over on Modern History TV, linked below to the video, and tried out some of the things that I talked about in my previous video, looking at the use of two-handed weapons like this Danax, or like the Bill here, or even uh, cutting spears, hewing spears, the Manavlion, as it's called on uh, Bannerlord. Mm, I'll have another, I'll have a rant about that at another point because it's not in any way um, uh, Manavlion. But anyway, um, and he got on his horse, his lovely good boy horse, Warlord, and basically went through some of the experiments hitting a uh, simulated knight, um, his SFK, and um, he looked at the use of the two-handed weapon on horseback. Can it be done? Well, I mean, I'd said in my video, it can be done. Uh, clearly he showed, yes, you can couch the thing and hit with the end of the object, whatever it is, whether it's something actually with a spike on the end or whether it's just with the butt. Uh, also, um, he showed that there were various things you could do with the reins if you wanted to free up both of your hands. And as I've always said and conceded, we do find if we look at medieval art and Renaissance art that sometimes everything from the Makievsky Bible all the way through to uh, Froissart's Chronicles and things like this, we do occasionally see people on horseback using their uh, pole weapons two-handed, almost like they'd use them on foot. Um, but there are a few things in this, and Jason touched on this beautifully, and thankfully, because I'm not a rider at all, I've only ridden a handful of times in my life, and I would never say I can ride a horse, because I can't at all, um, but he kind of confirmed some of my beliefs, and based on talking to people who do ride, you know, uh, people like Toby Kaplan, and people I know who joust competitively, and indeed Jason, um, uh, and essentially kind of confirmed some of my ideas, the fact that you know, even if you're not holding the reins, yes, you use your lower body, you use your um, your legs and you use your hips and your body movement to steer and control the horse. And yes, some cultures have specialised in doing this so that they can shoot bows from horseback, horseback archery found in Japan and obviously uh, Mongolia and China and Korea and various other places, particularly in Asia. Um, so yes, you can use both hands on a weapon while riding a horse, but... The real thing that I, I really was grateful for, um, for Jason showing, was the fact that when you do swing a two-handed weapon, unlike using a bow, where basically one hand, one arm might turn like this and the other one's drawing, but you, the, your lower body isn't really doing anything that's involved in shooting that bow that would affect the horse. And what Jason showed that confirmed my suspicions uh, was that when you swing a weapon, if you swing it, and I'll talk a bit about to swing or not to swing in a minute, because uh, not everyone out there is a swinger, um, but uh, what he confirmed was indeed when you swing a weapon, the problem is, is that things inevitably tend to happen with your lower body. And this leads your horse, if your horse has been trained, as most horses are, to respond to uh, input from the rider, this gives your horse information that you don't want to be giving it because you're just thinking about hitting someone with your weapon over here. But as you do it, you inevitably are going to bring this hip forward. And then as you swing, that hip's going to come forward there. And the horse is going to be going, oh, he wants me to go this way. Oh, no, he wants me to go. So the horse is getting information from your legs and your hips and your weight distribution that you don't mean to give it. So my main problem with Bannerlord and all other games, this could be for Mordhau as well, but my main problem with all games where there's a person on a horse using a two-handed weapon is not that there's a person on a horse using a two-handed weapon. We know that was done. That was done with Naginata in Japan. It was done with uh, various types of um, large Dao or glaive, essentially, in China. Um, it was done in Europe with all sorts of weapons, two-handed weapons on horseback sometimes. It wasn't common, but it was done sometimes. Uh, it was done by the Mongols and various other people. So it was done. But the point that I wanted to make and that Jason seemed to demonstrate and come to the same conclusion was that you cannot ride the horse with the same dexterity and manoeuvrability and control if you're using a two-handed weapon because you're not holding the reins. And when you move a two-handed weapon, you give information to the horse about steering, essentially manoeuvring, that you don't want to be giving it. So quite simply, yes, you can charge in a straight line down towards a group of people and you can get your two-handed weapon and you can smash them and carry on riding in a straight line. But to manoeuvre, and this is the problem where Bannerlord, we come back to Bannerlord again, or Mordhau or various other games that do this, is that in these games, you very often can control the horse just as well 
when you're wielding a massive great two-handed manavlion or axe or bardiche or whatever as when you're holding the reins with the lance couched, which is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The, the reason that throughout history people have held reins with their left hand and used a one-handed sword or one-handed weapon in their other hand or a couch lance or whatever is because it enables you to have a pretty good control of the horse and use a weapon. If you give up the control of the horse, you're giving up quite a lot of control of the horse. So I would have no issue with Banner Lord's use of manavlions or axes or whatever from horseback if when you did it, um, the control of the horse was massively diminished. If you couldn't tight turn those tight circles, you couldn't suddenly bring the horse to a stop. You couldn't do those things. So there has to be, they can't, with all martial arts, with, uh, with warfare, with history, with life, you very rarely only gain. If you want to gain something, you usually have to give up something else. Okay? Um, so, for fair gameplay and for realism, and a lot of people have leveled this criticism at me, Matt, it's just a game, just enjoy it. No! But it's really annoying that people swinging malavlions on horseback are so um, overpowered. They're so uh, ridiculously powerful and you go, well, why wasn't this the case in reality? Well, but because if you swing a manavli on a two-handed spear on horseback, first of all, you can't swing it properly. Uh, you're not going to swing it in the same way that you would on foot. But secondly, you wouldn't be able to ride as well. Um, and of course, you've given up all protection. You, you know, you, you don't have a shield in front of you and this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, so that's one thing. The second thing is about swinging. Um, and uh, I obviously on my channel there are a lot of people watching this who are swingers. That is, the majority of us use weapons on, on foot, not on horseback. Uh, and in the world of HEMA, uh, probably people who actually know how to ride make up less than 5%, I would guess, of the entire HEMA community. So most of us are familiar with using weapons like, well, not necessarily Dane axes, but things like long swords or montante two-handed swords, arming swords, this kind of stuff. We're used to using them on foot. But horseback's very, very different. And one of the things that Sir Richard Francis Burton points out in, um, in his writings is that on horseback, and you know, Alfred Huston and various other people said similar things. On horseback, if I just put this down for a second, and I will grab a, uh, here you go, a one-handed uh, saber. So this is a cavalry saber. So if you're on horseback and you're holding your reins now and you want to attack with a, with a sword, if you're at the standstill, so if you're in a melee, so if your horse is basically not moving or is only moving around a little bit and you become clogged up in a melee, indeed that might be like using your sword normally but uh, without lunging footwork of course. So you might be using the sword like this all around. But if you're riding at speed and you want to hit someone, it's specifically noted that what you don't want to do is ride along and, like in Bannerlord, make a massive great swing at them. Okay, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, you don't need to. The horse is moving quite fast, there's got a lot of momentum to it. Number two, by making a big swing, you're just making more movement than you actually need to to chop through the target as required. But number three, there is a very big risk that your blade will deflect off or glance off or come through the target in such a way that you hit your own horse. And you don't want that. Uh, your horse won't like it and you won't like it because your horse not liking it might end up with you on the ground surrounded by a load of infantrymen or, um, or injuring your horse, potentially even killing your horse if you're swinging something like this. And that, as we saw in my previous video, is my major issue with things like Bannerlord and Mordhau is swinging of massive things like this. And in the game, particularly in Bannerlord and Warband that went before it, are guilty of this, the weapon moves in a trajectory where it kind of moves magically through the person's own body and through the horse in an impossible trajectory. So what do you want to do? Well, quite simply, as the treatises point out, if you're riding fast along your horse, dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum, riding along, and there's an infantryman there and you want to hit them in the back of the head, you don't go whoosh like this. You just simply hold the blade out and let the horse's momentum do the work. So, this is how I would not have an issue with two-handed weapons used in Bannerlord. Number one, diminished skill of riding. If you elect to get on a horse with a freaking great Dane axe and swinging it like this, then firstly, 
your control of the horse should be massively reduced. Okay, that's a choice. There should be a plus and a minus. It should balance out. Number two, the trajectory of the blade, if, you, if you're moving it at all, if it hits the horse, it should hit your horse. Okay, so if you hit your own horse, you should wound your horse just the same as someone on the ground if you're riding past and they donk your horse in the, in the head or the flank as it goes past, it wounds them. Well, if you hit your own horse with your weapon, it should wound them equally, or at least to some proportion. And finally, if they want to make it purely palatable uh, to people like me and to make it more fair in game, what they should do is have weapons like this if they're being used on horseback, instead of swung massively wildly, just you know have a smaller movement out here and have a limited set of movements. Uh, maybe only have a few angles of attack that you can actually use a weapon like this from, from horseback. Okay, so yes, you could do it like Jason showed. You could do this upward cut he found quite effective on the breastplate because that's fine. It's not going towards the horse. It's not going to hit the horse. Yes, you could do a movement like that. You could just hold it out like this. And this would make it more balanced in game. It would make it more realistic, but it would also make it more fun because it would make it more fair. And the people on foot who are trying to fight against these um, people, I was going to use a rude word then, but these people on horseback who use manavlions and, and bardishas and giant two-handed axes on horseback, if they, were you, if they were rendered, if they were modelled in a more realistic way, it would make it fairer for everyone and therefore, I think, more fun for everyone instead of having half the people careening around the map at 60 miles an hour on a horse with amazing uh, manoeuvrability whilst waving a like eight foot long spear around and hewing down people like they were wheat at harvesting season <laughs> anyway um so thank you once again to jason kingsley for doing that really great and i'm not just saying that because it confirmed my suspicions it was just great to see and it's um it's always fun to watch your videos if you don't watch Jason's videos, go and check them out now. There's the link below to that video and you can watch the rest of his channel from there. Um, hopefully I'll see you uh, soon. Uh, Jason, when it's possible, we'll meet up and do some stuff. And um, it's uh, very much appreciated that you took this on and had a play with it because now I feel that my, uh, my uh, opinions on this topic, rather than being confirmed, are better informed. And I've now seen, I mean, I've got to be honest, I was surprised that you were able to use the pole axe as well as you were on horseback. So that's kind of opened my eyes a bit. And that's what it's all about. It's all about learning. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thanks again to Jason. Um, give me a subscribe and a like, please, if you haven't done already. Go and check out Jason's video as well. And I'll see you really soon again on Scholar Gladiatorial Channel. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.